Sensor scan to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons are at It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You're wasting your energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. From the wind. Watch how I saw it. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello, and welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. I'm your host, David, and joining me today, we have Amy. Hello. We have Eugene. Hello. And we have the ghosts of Stuart Past. Hey, I'm not dead. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> Yet. We still haven't we'll taken you down day. to the archery range, so Amy can practice her RPG launching at you. <laughs> That'd <laughs> be dangerous. <laughs> well, they may or may not be live RPGs. Who knows? We'll work that out when we get there. <laughs> anyway, throwing Stuart under the bus aside, um, this week's topic, this week is episode number 98, just for those who are keeping track. Um, today's date is the 30th of August, which is, yeah, crazy to think about when the first episode aired compared to now. And we will be talking about Star Trek Discovery, which is the new Star Trek series going on to um, the CBS's streaming uh, channel in the States, or for the rest of the world, Netflix. So, haha, victory to us. So... Let's kick it off by turning to Stuart, the news guy. He's been doing some digging into Star Trek Discovery. No, sorry, not Stuart. <laughs> Eugene has been doing some digging into Star Trek Discovery. Um, Eugene, what do we know? Well, some of what's been released is the um, the first officer sounds like they're going to be the main star of the show rather than the captain, which is a switch for a Star Trek series. But the more important thing is, with what's been released on Star Trek Discovery, it looks like the reason Paramount Pictures and CBS went after Axanar and Star Trek Horizon because they saw a direct competition against um, the timeline and what they're going to be doing. And they knew this was going to happen, which is why they... What sued Axanar and then issued the the uh, you don't want to do this against um, Horizon um, Horizon because what came out was um, the timeline they're using or the time frame they're using is about ten years before um, the original Star Trek because Paramount Pictures is seeing that timeline and time frame as a good potential for a story, which they're correct. That is, you know, a lot of that was talked about in the original Star Trek, and it has a lot of potential for for setting up things that we already know about. Exactly. The catch on it is, the catch on it is, Rather than looking at it in a way that a lot of fans would have and saying, okay, what's been done, whether in canon or non-canon, let's see what's already out there. And rather than doing that, they said, we're going to do our own stuff and we're going to shut down everything. Yeah. Because they've they've hinted already that... Um, they're, one of the main villains in the story is, is going to be the Klingons. Well, the, well, during that time frame, every Star Trek fan knows the Klingon Federation war occurred. Yeah. And that, I'm, I'm sort of that curious was what, what they're going to do with the Klingons, because I've heard they're going to be in there, and I'm thinking, well, if they do go down the Klingon route, then... <coughs> Sorry. Ah. Tad blocked up today. Um... I'll try and mute me if I'm going to cough. Anyway, um, I wonder if they're going to go with the classic look of the Klingons or the modern look of the Klingons. Because they sort of set it up in um, Enterprise that 
the Klingons were deformed between um, Enterprise and Next Gen, which is why in Next Gen they didn't have the whole brow thing. And then that was sort of resolved by TNG when they had their brow things back, like a better way of putting it. So I'm sort of curious right. how they're going to sort of go about designing them. Yeah, that's a good that's a good question that has not been brought up yet. But you know, like I, I was saying, that you know, a number of things have come out of a number of different people who have stepped back and actually looked at you know how Paramount's going after two of the fan films, but they're ignoring ones that are in direct violation of what they've already done. Yeah, because. Um, Star Trek continues and Star Trek Phase 2, they're, they're in direct violation because they not only play dress up with the original uniforms, they actually play Kirk, Spock, and McCoy. Exactly. Okay, and their ship is the Enterprise in both cases. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not like Star Trek Far- or Starship Farragut, which is another spin-off that, but it's aboard a different ship that takes place during the same time frame in which you know, they're associated with uh, Continues and um, Renegades has also been basically left alone on this but Renegades has also dropped all references to Star Trek in their upcoming productions yeah. just to get away from Paramount Exactly, and there has been a little bit of a fan backlash against Renegades for doing that, but I understand 110%. The majority of fans are with them, but there's a couple of people that are like, oh, I paid for a Star Trek movie, you're not giving me a Star Trek movie, I want a refund. Well, it doesn't quite work that way. So, yeah, anyway. I, I look at, I'm looking at this way. They're, yeah, they're going to make some changes because of, because of this, but they're still able to keep all of the cast they have and pretty much everything else is going to remain the same. So I'm not going to worry about it. Oh, yeah, it is exactly the same story they're going to tell. They've just changed a couple of words here and there, and that's it. So, yeah. But, you know, um, the other big thing that you only touched on was that in the U.S., we'll only get to see Star Trek on the CBS um, All Access. All Ac- yeah. And the po- point that came out recently was that in the U.S., it will cost us $6 a month, and we have to put up with commercials. But what's really interesting, when you dig further into the stories, is that the various episodes will not be all the same length. The length is going to vary a bit. And I wasn't... And I wasn't... I think I read that there's only going to be like 13 episodes or so. 30, 30 episodes this. is what they're doing, but the Fuller, the guy that's making it, wants to do 10. If there's any more seasons, he doesn't want to do a 26-episode season like Star Trek traditionally does. Why not? Because he feels that it'll stretch the story out too much. And if he's going for a sort of a hero's like story, which every episode plays into the next, that makes sense. Whereas in the traditional Star Trek series, very rarely did each episode play into the next, with the exception of Enterprise. Right. Because um, starting with season two, I think it was. Enterprise did a lot of ongoing story arcs. Yeah. The only, uh, other than Enterprise, the only other, you know, the only sci-fi before that that really did a good job with the ongoing story arc was Babylon Five. I disagree with that. I'd say Stargate did a pretty good job of the ongoing story arcs. Oh, but I think Babylon Five was before Stargate, wasn't it? Uh, Babylon Five was indeed before Stargate, but not by much. Let me have a look. Um, because I know Stargate was 97, 
I'm not sure when Babylon 5 was. Um, wow, I can't spell for crap today. Uh, when did you first air Babylon 5? Oh no! Yes, uh, it does predate Stargate by a couple of years. Not by much though, not as much as I thought. Babylon 5 ran from 94 to 98, whereas Stargate ran from 97 onwards. <laughs> so. Yeah, because that, or Stargate, when you count all the shows, it ran for 17 years. Oh yeah, it ran and, forever. So. Yeah. And, I'm, and I will admit, Stargate had an awful lot of ongoing story. Yeah. With things that link together. But Babylon 5, I think, helped pave the way for Stargate showing that it could be done in the U.S. Because that was one of the things that with Star Trek, they, they were not allowed to do ongoing stories. Yeah. You know, they, they were only allowed to do, you know, two or three episode arcs and that was it. Yeah, they, they, they did have their sort of longer ongoing stories, like their overriding arcs, but yeah, I do agree that only a handful of their episodes were directly playing into the next one. But Babylon right. 5 did a lot of that as well. They did a lot of sort of standalone episodes. Yeah. It wasn't, but until, they had later on that they did, it wasn't until later on that they did the longer sort of overriding stuff, like the war. Right. Yeah. And then Stargate had a lot of overreaching arcs along with a lot of stories that linked back and forth, yeah. even across the various shows. Well, so did Deep Space Nine. Deep, Deep Space Nine had its war, which went across an entire, what, season, two seasons, something like that? Um, which was think... less episodic? Oh, yeah. Anyway, that's not the point. <laughs> we, we have sort of disappeared off the course a tad so yeah but anyway the point is that um, the, the full is saying that he would prefer to do 10 episode seasons after the first season but the 13 episode season is what he needs for the first season they've already written episode 1 was done uh, the first hour was done by the guys who wrote Into Darkness the second hour was written by I can't remember as of a couple of weeks ago, they've got until the fifth hour written, with up to 11 plot pointed. So, that was the update I read yesterday, I think it was. Um, so, yeah. So, it's, it, I, I'm definitely, I'm looking forward to it. It should be, should be interesting. I'm curious to see where they go with it. But at the same time, I'm also curious to see where, um... Axanar is going because I would love to see sort of Axanar crap all over the new series as much as I would love to see the new series crap all over Axanar. I'm, I'm very conflicted. <laughs> <laughs> I personally would have liked, like I hinted at at the beginning, I think I would have liked to have seen them take a look at Axanar, take a look at where um, the original episodes that refer to it and then take a look at some of the licensed products Paramount had put out years ago, which Axonar used as a starting point. Yeah. Because Axonar did kind of look at the old Fossa games, which referred to the Klingon War. Now, granted, Axonar did not use any of the ship designs in there. Because while some of the designs are okay, Fossa really did not have a good handle or understanding of how the, the, the ships of Star Trek were mostly designed. Yeah. And I like the so actual lot... ships because they, they their design does look like an evolution of the NX-01 towards the TOS series stuff. Yes. And, um... Yeah. Yeah. And, and the numbering scheme that they use in Axonar makes sense in that respect, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what I would like to see, and I know it's not in a million years would this happen, say Axanar is dead and buried tomorrow. Like, as far as they're concerned, they're still pushing ahead with it. But just say tomorrow it's dead and buried. And we hear out of the news that the people that Axanar had organised to be um, their 
their sort of their ship, their crew, those guys are now going to be one of the support ships in the CBS series. Just just a one off sort of guest spot style position and that's it. And that's sort of CBS like if I was CBS, that's the way I would bridge this and say, Look, guys, we're going down this path towards where you guys are going, we need you to stop. But it's compensation for you and Horizons. What we're going to do is we're going to um, have the crews that you'd organise to be in your your show, but we'll have them as guest spots in ours. If we have like a big fleet battle, we will have um, the this specific crew that you guys have already got, just for a quick say, maybe on one of the view screens, pop up on a view screen. No lines, no words, nothing like that, but just there. That way you guys are in Star Trek canon proper. Your characters are in Star Trek canon proper, if you know what I mean. Um, they won't be named as the characters they are from your fan film, but that would be a nice way of doing a olive branch. Um, yeah, but we're talking about being nice. Oh, I know. Um, <laughs> and we're a little bit beyond the whole be nice phase. Like, I would love to see... Um, the guys from Horizons, the um, that Discovery, I would love to see a reference made in the new Discovery, not to that specific ship, but to say the previous captain of the Discovery, and they show that guy. Now, obviously, that leaves them open to those guys turning around and saying, look, you took our thing, we're going to sort of sue you for it. But if in advance they turn around and say, look, you guys are... They sort of contact them and say, look, this is what we're looking at doing. We want to honour you guys, but we can't give you anything for it. If you guys agree, sign on the dotted line. We'll honour your guys' story. And while it won't technically be canon, it will still sort of... If you know what I mean, like we'll sort of bring it a little bit closer to our universe away from the fanon universe. And if they did an... I'll you like away. Yeah. If they did an olive olive branch approach like that, I think it would have gone down a hell of a lot better with the fans than just a fuck you, shut down, goodbye approach. But mm-hmm. especially like since I mentioned earlier that the oh, there were only two that they they actually issued the the cease and desist type of things against. Yeah. Exactly. So. I kind of wish EJ was here. EJ would be all over this. <laughs> He's busy with mobility. Oh, yeah. He is busy, busy today. So, anyway. Um, yeah, so what else do we know? We know the captain is going to be female. It's going to be called number one. Um, we know that she's not a captain. That's a my bad. I just said that she was, but she's not. The main lead is the first officer. Of a ship. Which makes me sort of think, what's the go with the captain? Do we, I, I suspect in the first episode, what's going to happen is there's going to be like a, a, captain off. A, big, a big battle which results in the captain dying. And her taking over. But... Or even... Gee, I'd, love it if, I'd love it if, if the captain went rogue. Yeah. Or even if the captain is injured and is sort of out of the picture, so she can't take over the role as captain, hence not being captain. But sort of becomes a um, temporary captain, lack of a better way of putting it. The main leader. Yeah. Sort of a Riker when Picard goes Borg. That may work. Yeah. No, no, they've 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 obviously got it worked out how they're going to play it. So, well, we've we've seen similar things happen, uh, like you point out on on uh, Voyager. You know, Spock's taking command of the Enterprise on more than one occasion. Um, and gee, when the Maquis joined uh, Voyager, you know, okay, Chakotay only became first officer, but. <clears throat> Because the other first officer had been killed. Yeah. So, you know, it's something we've seen enough times in other Star Trek that it would not be unusual. Yeah. So it'll be... It's it's sort of a scenario that's already been sort of set up at other shows where 
when the captain goes down, the XO steps up to take over and um, take control. Um, like in Battlestar Galactica when Adama got shot and um, Cranky took over. Who's oh, Crank, Crank, uh, Cranky McDrunken guy whose name eludes me for the moment. Soul Tide. Soul Tide, that's the one. Thank you. Soul takes over as commander of the Battlestar reluctantly and he really didn't want to be there. And he really did a bang up job. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. What, of not being there? Oh, no, he he screwed the pooch in about every way imaginable. But was that deliberate, though? No, he... Uh, <laughs> yes, let, it... Let's put it this way. Let's put it this way. There's certain assignments you don't give people that don't have no experience in those positions. Yeah. And he did? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it results in, in some very bad things happening with major repercussions later. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm, yeah. Now let's move on to the Klingon side of things, the Klingon battle side of things. How do we think they're going to approach the war? Because assuming that it, it, we know it takes place 10 years before the original series, so it would take place about right in the guts of the, the Klingon War. How do we think that's going to affect them? They'll probably be fighting a war amongst each other? Well, the way the Klingon War went is that the Klingons and the Federation, at first contact between the two, the Klingons just turned around and deleted us. And they just wrecked havoc across Federation space for quite a substantial chunk of it until um, the battle at or well, around Axida, and at which point the tide managed to turn. We managed to sort of push them back, and we pushed them back more and more and more. The problem is we needed the original series Enterprise class ships, the Constitution class ships in order to turn the tide enough. And, and, and about the time as the, the Constitution class was coming out, the D7s were coming out. Yeah. So, so that's the big issue, is the, that's right about the end of the war. It's sort of like what was going on with Nazi Germany. They had all this tech they were putting out, out at the end of World War II, but... At the same time, the Allies had their own tech that was coming out, and you know they couldn't couldn't compete against each other. Yeah, exactly. Because of everything out. And yeah, and it's, it's one of the things that I sort of lament the loss of Axida because one of my favorite moments in Prelude to Axida is the speech, that speech where he's like. Uh, Compared to the loss of the dream that is the Federation, I don't fear the Klingon Empire. That's one of those sort of a, oh, shit's about to get real moments. Yeah, I mean, Tony Todd does a fantastic job oh, yeah. with that speech. Oh, yeah. And, um, like, the, the, the prelude to Axida was like, yeah, that, yeah. That's one of the reasons why I'm really sort of lamenting the loss of it and hoping beyond hope, that the new series can live up to that. Because, yes, it's a fan project, but it set the fair... It, well, put it this way, it got the fans ridiculously wet for that battle. And then we got and, blue balled, So, And that's why I, what I said was... That's why what I said was what Paramount should have done was gone to Axanar, looked at what they were doing, and then built on that. Used yep. that as their starting point. Because there's still a lot they can build from. And, you know, they could have gone to them and said, okay, we're going to use other ships in this, but we can still utilize what you've done. And we'd like to, you, you know, we want to use your ship, your other ships, and we'll eventually bring in the other pieces. Because, like you pointed out, the ships look, you know, canon because they look like they fall in between Enterprise and the original track. Exactly. But see, the, the downside to that is it opens up a massive legal nightmare. 
And Paramount's way of dealing with a legal nightmare was make them go away and we'll do our own thing. Which, yeah. Like, from our point of view, it makes sense. From the legal point of view, it to do that, it really doesn't. And I know I hate defending them from that point of view, but sometimes to understand where someone's coming from, you must view it from their perspective. And from their perspective, they made the right move. And I disagree with that. Like, I agree with you 100%. They should have gone to Axanar. They should have... Hell, I would have gone as far back as Horizons and said, look, you guys have made this spectacular film, fan film, we're looking at doing this. Do you guys want in? I would have gone to Axanar and said, look, this is what we're looking at doing. Do you guys want in? It's like, it's take the money that you were that you raised, whatever, however much money that is, the million dollars from Axanar, if that goes to CBS... Do you guys get a, a paid wage out of it while the show's running instead? And we will convert the story from Horizons, tie it into Axanar, tie it into TOS. Bring all of that into one massive club. And I guarantee you the Horizon guys would be like, fuck yes. The Axanar guys would be like, fuck yes. We, we're all over that. <laughs> But the problem well, with that is it becomes a, becomes a massive sort of ego clash, because Alex could, I've yeah I've heard some things about Alex, so I'll leave it there. Uh, well, Horizons, um, they their basic focus was right about the time of the Romulan War, which is right after the end of Enterprise. Yeah, and so they they weren't in as much um, danger of stepping on and Discovery's toes, so to speak. Yeah, no, it was just the ship was named Discovery. Right. And at which point, Paramount could have said, that, okay, we're, we want to name our ship Discovery too. Um, so, they could have gone to them and said, okay, we're naming our ship Discovery. We would at least like to see what script you're producing so that you know, you know, we don't want to, co- we don't want you to create a problem with our story. Yeah. Like, no. uh, I'd even love a, like a bit of, or like say in Discovery on the, in the Captain's Lounge, you know how in Enterprise they had the Captain's Lounge and had all of the previous Enterprises on the wall in the background? I would love right. that with Discovery, the TOS Discovery, and it has the NX-01 class Discovery mounted on the wall in the background. Something like this. Just a little right. callback to the... It's a callback to the fans more than anything else. Sort of a head nod saying, look, we've seen what you did. You did good work. With sort of, here's a head nod. Sort of, good work, guys. Sort of thing. Right. Like, and if uh, Discovery and the... goes long enough, I would love to see them do a crossover with Continues or Phase 2 or one of those sort of projects that takes place in, t- in the original series timeline. Because if they turn around to the Continues guys, say they've got an episode set in the future, obviously Shatner and all of them are too fucking old to play those roles anymore. You have an interaction with the Enterprise, but it's that crew of the Enterprise, the the Continues crew, and I guarantee they would be all over that. They would love it. Yeah. Just, I mean, nonsense. there's a lot of that. Yeah. And the thing is, is most fa- most fans of Enterprise, I um, look at the NX class, where they started with Enterprise and then they did Columbia. Well, yeah. most fans have looked and said, okay, if they would have continued the show, uh, what we would have seen for the other NX classes would have continued the names based on the space shuttles, yeah. because that was the order that the shuttles were named. Yeah. So NXO three would have been Challenger, and I'm going to screw them up, but I know there was um, Endeavor, um, Atlantis. Uh, was that all, or what? Just a Discovery. Yeah. So, so they would have done something like that. They could have even done the nod to the um, one ship of the line painting that was done which showed Columbia crashed on a planet 
and is found during the next generation timeline where they could have had Columbia lost. Yeah. So, yeah, it's... I don't know, there is, like... From the outside looking in, there is a lot of different ways that they could have incorporated the fan stuff, but from the inside looking out, I don't know why they didn't. Which is sort of the, the ultimate end of the discussion. Um, is there anything else we know about Star Trek Discovery we haven't mentioned yet? I think we covered most of it. Yeah, not that I could think of. Stuart, you got anything? Um, I'm more curious. Um, uh, uh, just mainly like sh- what show bases more with the Klingon War stuff because uh, it's just it's just because we know that it's going to be the first officer that's going to be the main character it makes you wonder could the captain be part Klingon and then go rogue or something like that or, or... Yeah, I don't know the, before the Klingon War there was very little interaction between the Klingons and the Federation even in Enterprise there was very little interactions outside of the opening episode that I could think of that involved Klingons there were a few other episodes but but um there wasn't too many of them. Yeah, because they, they normally focused on the the Federation, like pre-Federation, Federation member planets was a lot of what the focus was on. So, and the Time War and the Sydney War and all that other stuff. <laughs> Is it sad? I, I, I watch, I've watched a few random episodes of it, but anytime you say Klingons, I'm thinking face huggers. <laughs> uh, well, you think about it, cling on. They yeah. cling on to you. It's, it's like it's like thinking furlings. Furling in Stargate SG One is actually a reference to a type of sailing boat. But when you say furling, the first thing you think of is friggin' Ewoks. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I just want to get cast in news, I guess, mainly. It's like, who's playing what role? Yeah, they've apparently already... It's, that's actually one of the other points you reminded me. They've got... The, they've announced... Uh, did they announce who the captain's going to... The, the first officer's going to be? don't think they did. Mm, I don't... I'm not no, sure. But I, I, the, the article that I read said they've already got five or six of the people lined up, ready to go. So, that's really cool. I would love to see Mark Shepard. Because (laughs) Star Trek is one of the few series he hasn't been in yet that I can think of off the top of my head. So we we have to do Mark Shepard, some campaign that gets Mark Shepard into bloody Star Trek and one that gets him into the Stargate reboot movies. Because that way he'll be in every every major sci-fi with the exception of Babylon 5 and Star Wars. Hey, he could still show up in 8 or 9. <laughs> He's really good. Uh, oh, Mark Shepard, yeah. If there is... If all of these different universes... All these different shows took place in a shared multiverse, you would be the Watcher. The, from Marvel. So, anyway. That's not the point. Um, let's move on to Killjoys and Dark Matter. Stuart, are you up to date? Uh, I'm like one episode behind, so... Ah, one episode behind. Cool. I won't, I won't mention what happens this week. I didn't watch this week's episodes this morning at two times speed, so... <laughs> Trust me, that's intense. That is intense. <laughs> very, very intense. If you want to watch a show and you want to sort of sit back afterwards going, wow, that burnt into my brain really hard, watch it at two times speed. It's... It's kind of cool. Um, but you need to watch it on something like VLC where you can actually still hear what they're saying. Why do they... They do all this and do all this. So, anyway. Um, yeah, I was going to say, how could you hear what they're saying if you had it at two times speed? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a VLC player thing. Anyway, um, so, Stuart, what are you up to? What do you think of Killjoy so far? Uh, I've been enjoying Killjoys. I think... I 
definitely prefer season two over season one. Yeah, I was just about to say, I definitely prefer season two over season one. It feels like they've found their legs, they've found their stride, and they're they're definitely pushing forwards. Now, yep. This week is... The reason I wanted to cover it this week is because this week's episode of Killjoys is very much... <laughs> but you haven't seen it, so we can't really talk about it. Oh, no, no, I've seen this week's Killjoys. I haven't seen this week's Dark Matter. Ah, okay. Well, this week's Dark Matter is relatively inconsequential. Um, okay. Yeah, no, the Killjoys. Oh. Yeah. So, but oh. for those who don't know, in Killjoys, the the three main characters have been trying to save Old Town this season. There's a wall that's put in place which effectively acts like an EM field generator, which generates a field that makes... sort of effectively makes people docile, makes makes them sort of easily easy to control. Um, as a result... The field gets dialed up to happy, and everyone inside, it's, it's it's like they're all high, and they're just all like, "Wee! Oh, look at all the pretty daffodils! This high on morphine." Um, it reminds me of um, there's a there was a game that came out uh, recently. Yeah. Um, it, uh, <laughs> uh, we happy few. Yeah, I know the game. Yeah, and basically you take happiness pills to yeah. to some. <laughs> it's it's really it's like. That's effectively it. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's so weird. And so yeah, so the um, the X Men Killjoy and the girlfriend Doctor. I can't remember his name, but he's gonna be a, he's gonna be an old Comic Con anyway. Not the point. They get really stoned off their oh, face while they're yeah. He's one of the he's one of the Ashwall brothers. They got one of them. Oh yeah, he's two. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Anyway, um, so they get they happen to be inside the field trying to work out what the company's trying to do to. With the field to take over Old Town and work out what the hell's going on. Besides so stoning everyone off their face. Yeah, well, the field gets set to stoned while they're in there, and they get, like, ridiculously happy, and then the dude that she's friends with, who she's trying to convince the company is evil, rocks up to try and help them, and he's like, you guys are fucking high, what the hell? And then the bad guy dude busts in the door, shoots the... The, the Fred guy, and then gives the two, got, gives the Killjoy and the girly, the, um, what's it called? The, the gun, and takes a photo of it, and they just sort of sit there going, ha ha ha, totally out of their face. Off their face. Not caring that their, their close friend has been shot, and is just sitting there dead next to them. They're just like, wee! It's like McKay, when, the episode where he's uh, <laughs> gets shot in the arse with an exactly. arrow. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's sort of the reason why... I think he um, turned up the field to happy gas so he could shoot the friend. Yeah, exactly. And blame, the other, and blame them for it. Exactly. That was sort of their whole plan. So, anyway, they then, after they get rescued from the happy drug field... Um, they manage to break into his base, kick his ass, scare and capture him and drag him out. In the meantime, they're trying to work out a way to disable the field around Old Town. The, the Doctor has a bit of a, sort of a, I don't have a, she had a bit of a talking to earlier on where it's like, sometimes you've got to make the hard choice. And she looks at the field, sets it to anger and says, look, this field, and gets on the, the PA system for the town and says, look, this field is what's controlling you. You guys, you've got to hate the field, you've got to attack the field, It's and all that sort of stuff. So then everyone gets ridiculously, ridiculously angry thanks to the field's effect, and just charges endlessly at the wall until it just overloads it and shuts it down. Um, at which point they all get captured Killing by Killing hundreds of people bomb. in process. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Killing lots and lots of people in the process. Um, it, then they get captured by said angry mob because said angry mob is still angry because the effects of the field it, when it shut down the effects of the field didn't wear off so they're still pissed uh, they capture female killjoy and uh, start beating the crap out of her and torturing her which is sort of cuts back to the start of the episode um, uh, then they sort of have a bit of a fight, blah, 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 shenanigans happens, and then they decide that 
the who's the evil evil chick from the 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 other CEO evil chick? Oh, um, yeah. Anyway, uh, she. Rocks, I know you mean. I can't think of the name. Yeah, she rocks up and it's like, look, we've decided to give you because it was broadcast over the entire quad what they're doing on Westerly, and she's like, look, we've decided to give you guys your independence. So here we go. Um, signed the piece of paper that gives, gives them their independence, stamps their hand on it with blood to sort of, it's part of the old Wesley tradition. Knife goes from the main guy that was beating the crap out of the Killjoy to the main doctor chick. And then after she's signed it and blood patched it, it goes to the evil CEO lady who then proceeds to stab and kill the doctor. <laughs> yep. And it turns out that all the Scarbacks that were there at the time were actually Sixes. And they're trying to convert yeah. everybody on Westerly into sixes. Ugh. So, yeah. Not she fun. Hits, she Not hits fun the at fan all. and they manage to get out of there just in time. And she turns around and she's like, oh, look at this. I've actually got this second secret document, which says that we're going to be allies as opposed to you guys having your freedom. And, oh, look, this dead body happens to stamp a hand on it exactly the same way she did before. Shock or a gasp. This one comes pre signed with the blood. Um, and, yeah. Sort of heads there, so. Correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't this week's episode like the finale? Um, I don't know. I don't think so. I could be wrong. Um, let me have a look. That it, it definitely me felt of, like it. Of the show I found on Netflix. It just it says it only has the ten episode ten episode second season, and the next episode is episode ten. So. Yeah. So I'm like, wow, we got to that quickly. Yeah. Dark Matter still has a few episodes left on it. Yeah, to, according to the wiki, we are yeah almost at the, the second last episode of season ten. What the hell? So next week is the final. Well, this week is the final. It's a couple of days. Yeah, I know. Now. How quick did that come? Yeah. Well, if it's only ten episodes. It's not going to take long to get through them, really. Yeah, but still. Looks like Dark Matter's got a longer season, though. I think they've got 13. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, 13 episodes. It'll finish on the 16th of September. So, Supernova week. Uh, Oz Comic Con week. Yeah. There. Which Wait, I don't think I should be able to do. Yeah. What? You won't be going to Oz Comic Con? I might, I might have to miss an Oz Comic Con, yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I might be able to do one day, but that's a really big if at this point. Wow. What the hell happened? Uh, money stuff. Money what? issues and stuff. Ah. That'll do it. You can always just come and hang out outside. Like, there'll be tons of people. Just just do what a lot of people who don't go inside do. Just come and hang around out the front with everybody else. Should have put in for, I should have put in for a media pass. It's too late to do it now. Yeah. Oh, well. well I'm waiting to hear back from Volunteer because they closed the applications this week, um, end of this week, so I might, I might hear something about that. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, I could That'd see be like the oh, I hope I get it. I'd love to do it. I've oh, been yeah. wanting to do it for so long. Oh, yeah. And I would definitely be pushing to be Rainbow's friend. <laughs> I don't think you get a choice with that one. You can choose to be a handler, but you can't choose what person you get. Ah. Well, yeah. I didn't choose to be a handler. I chose to either be um, to run the gaming and tabletop area or uh, or be one of the ushers. Ah, okay. So. Uh, I look forward to tormenting you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get the fuck out of your seat! <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I could do that. <laughs> oh yeah. So anyway, um, let's shift over to Dark Matter. Now this season of Dark Matter has been fairly sort of... Yeah. It's... I can't put my finger on it. But it's... it's almost like... It's almost like... Um... <laughs> it's almost like... Dark Matter and Killjoy's like switched the switched up from like season one. 
Yeah. Because season one Killjoys was met. Season one Dark Matter was fantastic. This time it's season two Killjoys is it's brilliant. Really and season two of Dark Matter just meh. Yeah, it's sort of so season two of Dark Matter. It's it's been good. Don't get me wrong. It has been good. But there's just something about it that doesn't seem right. Like, I can't put my finger on it. It's one of those things where it's... It's it's still got all of the elements that it had in the original se- season, but it doesn't feel like it's stepped them up. Like, Killjoy stepped no. up for season two. Yeah. It really did. But Dark Matter doesn't feel like it's done that. It feels like it's... Even though the characters on the ship have changed, it still feels like it's the same, just plodding along sort of thing. But they're definitely putting the pieces in place to change that by the end of this season, and I'm hoping the next few episodes really ramp it up because they kind of yeah. need to. Um, so to keep on going. Yeah. I just want October to come because then we get Flash and Arrow back, and I'll be happy. <laughs> <laughs> Mainly just Flash. Mainly just Flash, really. I don't know if I care too much for Arrow anymore, but yeah, Flashpoint. Oh yeah. It's definitely going to be interesting. Especially, apparently, with some interesting news that's just come out, which I'll get to in the news. Yes, yes. Uh, we're about to do the model report, hobby or hobby report. report, or whatever the, whatever the hell. <laughs> <laughs> the Eugene report. We're going with that from now on. Um, well, um, I've been setting up... Uh, a new distribution point for Perry County Hobbies. Um, I've contacted Dragon USA, which is the main distributor for Dragon Models in the U.S. And I decided to ask um, the question that's on everybody's mind. Will we get to see the new Star Wars uh, models in the U.S.? And they said that, that that is still in limbo. Nobody knows. That sucks. Uh, apparently, there's... Yep, because these kits uh, put the Ravel monogram kits to shame. And when we can sit there and honestly say, yeah, dragons... The people that are doing the dragon Star Wars kits are the same ones that do the dragon... Uh, tank models. And anybody that's familiar with uh, high quality tank model kits by Dragon, um, they're looking at things like the two foot tall Adek going, ooh, I want. <laughs> because yes. They are, they're putting the same people that did their, their tanks in 135th scale are doing their 135th scale. Star Wars kits, and they have a have a two foot tall Adat coming out. Oh, two foot tall Adat. That's the size of a small dog. Wow, it's the size of a large dog, but that's not the point. Yeah. <laughs> two foot. That's yeah. That's like uh, waist high. That is huge. That's fucking insane. Yeah. Well, you figure the one three fiftieth scale Star Trek kits that are out are. The MX-01 is two feet long, and then the TOS Enterprise and Enterprise A are just shy of three feet long. Holy and crap. <laughs> Trumpeter, Trumpeter is putting out one 200-scale battleships. They have, uh, it's either the Missouri or the New Jersey that is 50... Three inches long has seventeen hundred pieces, and in the U.S. it's either a four or five hundred dollar kit. <laughs> My God, that's all of the awesome. So, yeah. So, um, I'd love to see uh, some of these trumpeter kits hit the U.S. market for, or not, Dragon Kits hit the U.S. for Star Wars. Yeah. Because I know Ravel managed to keep Bandai out, and they managed to keep Bandai out of most countries. 
because from what I understand, you guys couldn't even get them in the U in uh, Australia. You had to basically find smaller companies that imported them. Yeah. So, and it's a shame because these are licensed by Disney. They're just being blocked because Ravel managed to get a very limited license that said only we are allowed to bring the kits in. And their kits are are not quality. The only quality kits they're producing is the the repops of the the fine mold kits. And while those are very nice kits, um, they're also very expensive kits. The X Wing and the Tie Fighter are in the nine eighty to a hundred dollar price range. And the, and the Millennium Falcon, which is a foot long and has about 900 pieces, is in the three to four hundred dollar price range. Ouch. Yeah. So they're nice kits. Don't get me wrong, but um, I'd like to see what uh, Dragon's going to do, and I'd like to see those kits come in. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely have to look up those kids later. But that's the hobby report from Harry County Hobbies. Right. The robot today. Yeah. <laughs> that's the hobby report for Perry County Hobbies, for those who didn't understand what Eugene said at the very last second. It was going really well until the Perry County Hobbies part. <laughs> so anyway, I guess it's about time to do the news since we missed out on it last week. Um, so I think we'll start off with the was really... Was there any news? <laughs> no, there wasn't. We ran out of time. Um, so I think, Stuart, you'll start off with the sad news that only yeah. just sort of broke, and then we'll move on from there. Yeah, this is, well, this is a kick in the chest. Gene, Gene Wilder was, like, I love Willy, I love the original Willy Wonka movie to yeah. death, and this is just a kick in the gut. To know that Gene Wilder is no longer with us. 83, I think he was. Yeah, 83, and he was battling Alzheimer's. Yeah. And they kept that a secret. Oh, yeah. Like, no one knew he had that, by the family, by his family, of course. Yeah. So, yeah, that's really yeah, sad. Tons, tons of, tons and tons of people in Hollywood have reached out. Mel, Mel Brooks, like, the, those two are, like, synonymous. Yeah. Well, I know that um, EJ posted up on Facebook, and I know he won't mind me sharing. He said that he was inspired by those by by him in his early days, and he's definitely very sad by by his passing. So it's just it's a like a lot of people love Gene Wilder. This yeah, and his his, his second comment was debut twenty sixteen. George R. R. Martin laid lay it off already. Oh, wow, <laughs> shots fired. <laughs> but yeah, it's like we're averaging one, one, one a month at the moment, aren't we? I think about that. I think that's about right. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's get on to some really interesting, uh, interesting clip that came out, and I don't know if you guys have seen this yet or not. But uh, Ben Affleck today uh, posted up a clip on his Twitter. Hmm. And it's got everyone freaking out because it's a death stroke. Oh yeah, and, um, I I heard that. And the... so now the whole rumor going is that the solo, the Batman solo film villain will be Deathstroke, which would be friggin' spectacular. And the outfit, oh dude, that outfit looks amazing. Oh yeah. If they don't kill it again. <laughs> no, no, it looks, it looks amazing. And if we get a fight, and I I hope. That we get like the fight style of, of of that Batman, like we did in Batman and Superman, yeah. between those two going on, oh, <laughs> that might go down as one of the best fight scenes in the movie history. If those two go, <laughs> if we get something like that, oh yeah, because those two are pretty much comparable characters in a lot of ways. With it's like the main bad guy for T Titans was Slade Wilson. The main bad guy yeah. in Arrow was Slade Wilson. Like, he's one of the most well-known sort of mercenary badasses in the DC universe. So much so that 
Deadpool is based on him, if I remember correctly. Um, kinda. kinda. <laughs> it, was kind of, it was sort of like a joke thing yeah. at the start. Yeah, it was. It was. It was a. It was a spoof take on him. I know, but. And now look at what Deadpool is. Oh yeah, it's it's gone hilarious. But yeah, the, I woke up and I saw it. I'm like, oh, oh, please, yes. What you? But... <sighs> no, leave that alone. What? Just leave that alone. Walking away. Leaving the. Well, the question is, does that mean we won't get Deathstroke anymore in the Arrowverse? Well, wasn't he killed off in the Arrowverse? No, 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 he's still on um, Le he's still locked up in Leon Yu. Oh, okay. No, I, 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 honestly, I didn't really like the Arrowverse version. I love the Teen Titan version. He is so menacing in Teen Titans. The Slade. Yeah. And the Young Justice as well. So... Yeah. Alright. Um, moving on, and this is uh, interesting, and I don't know if JD can hear me when I say this or not, but I'll probably hear a squeal if she does. But uh, you guys know the company Bil uh, Builder Bear? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be able to make Eevees. God. <laughs> I just heard a yay from the other room. <laughs> 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 Told you. I, oh. I just, uh, to be honest, I love Eevee as well. I, I think I'm like, I might actually get one for myself. Okay, well, when is this happening? Uh, well, it's, 1st. it's starting in America um, in um, September 1st, but I'm not sure what we're getting it over here. Yeah. But I don't think it'll be too much longer, probably a month or two afterwards. Yeah, because I'm going to I'm gonna have to take Jesus there, and he's just going to go, I'll have all of the things! <laughs> dial it down, Jesus, well, you can, dial you can, it like, down. There has like a little jumper and... Um, Oh, it's like a little, a little jumper and 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 stuff to wear on it. So, oh god. Okay, I find I'm it look one up thing. A picture of this now. <laughs> I find one thing interesting with Eevee, even though it's my favorite Pokemon as well, that it's a lot of people's favorite Pokemon, even though it's technically so unstable. <laughs> yes. So, uh, this is I can't what believe they're the doing What the actual this. fuck? Sorry, I just what? saw a picture of the Builder Bear Eevee. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck. Put a link in. <sighs> it's cute, isn't it? Oh, cute nightmare fuel. Same difference. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. It's not that bad. All right, um, so speaking of the Flash news that I mentioned briefly, um, I supposedly uh, Jesse Quick is about to be coming back. Which is um, Earth to Harrison Wells' um, daughter. Yeah. But supposedly she's going to have a costume this time. Ooh. So yeah, um, let me bring up. I, I saw this story briefly, um, and it's uh, someone got, uh, was on set, and uh, let me. There we go. Yeah. I, uh, Twitter account, uh, Canada Graphs, uh, um, because they're filming in Vancouver, obviously, so all the Canadians get to go visit on set, apparently. But, um, said, uh, got an autograph tonight from Flash star Violet being on set. Spoiler alert. Jesse Quick was in costume. Sorry, no pics today. Now, whether this is going to be to do with the Flashpoint stuff, or she actually is going to be a speedster after the Flashpoint stuff is finished? Not yeah. sure yet. So, is she, a, a, is she a, a speedster into the comic? Yeah, yeah, she is a speedster in the comics, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, this, uh, this, uh, I don't want to report on this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Oh, I got some Transformers news. Oh. Uh, so, I don't know if you guys have heard or not, but supposedly we're going back in time to medieval era of Transformers. Boo. To King Arthur. Boo. Okay, that's it. We're done. We're done. We're done, Stuart. You're done. You're out the airlock. Goodbye. News is over. <laughs> okay. Th th thanks to for Stuart ruining this week's podcast. It was going so well, and in the last minute, he had to mention Transformers <laughs> and King Arthur, which is by far the worst storyline from the original Gen 1 series. So that's We'll it. make it good news. Yeah. We'll make it good news, then. This yeah. week's uh, DVD and Blu-ray release, The Arrow, comes out. Out... Uh, I think there's a season four, I think, and um, 
Star Wars Rebels season two. Love and if you pick up Rebels. the Blu ray if you pick up the Blu ray version of Rebels, they're going to include the bl- the Blu ray, the D V D and the codes for the digital. Alright, that's it for this week's podcast. Catch you later. Bye. 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 Check out Facebook.com slash sci fi. Facebook.com slash <laughs> Facebook.com slash